Facebook's Libra pushes back at claims project is threat to financial stability. Is Libra dead or is it only just beginning? G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back or to the channel where we talk all things crypto, money, finance, gold, economics, and a little bit of politics as we look for a new way moving forward into the future where it will likely be broken away from fiat currencies and we can see multiple projects coming up beyond Bitcoin where fiat will be dead and crypto moves forward. This article in from Coindesk.com, it reads, the head of the Facebook-led Libra Association has responded to claims that the cryptocurrency project threatens nation's financial stability. In an interview with French daily Les Echoes on Thursday, Bertrand Perez, the association's managing director and COO, played down concerns over potential disruption to the monetary policies of central banks with currencies included in the Libra Reserve, a basket of fiat currencies and government bonds that will back up the Libra digital currency. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Libra project, that being Facebook's cryptocurrency that they're trying to introduce, what's different about Libra comparative to other cryptocurrencies? In the first instance, let's compare it to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is completely decentralized. No one owns it as such. That is, it is completely immutable and on a blockchain that has no control by a centralized body. There is a set supply and the value of crypto or Bitcoin, I should say, is linked to the mining and the market. So the mining and the market determines the value. Now, when we go to something like USDT or Tether, that value is allegedly valued by the US dollar. That is, it's supposed to be pegged to the US dollar. Now, when we come to Libra, that is pegged or comparative to or backed by multiple values, not just the US dollar or something else. It is, in fact, linked to multiple values, arguably creating more stability. But the article reads on, such claims do not seem to us to be justified, he said. It is their monetary policies that will influence the Libra through the basket and not the other way around. Perez justified the comments by offering details on the reserve, which he said will comprise of the US dollar, the euro, yen, pounds, sterling, and the Singapore dollar, but not the Chinese yuan. So there is that linking to multiple values, multiple numbers. But of course, if you look at that list, what do they all have in common? They're all fiat. Moving on. The reserve, he said, will be invested in the basket currencies and in very short term, government debt of less than a year of the countries of those currencies. At maximum, the reserve would amount to probably no more than 200 billion, Perez said, though he provided a range from a few tens of billions and up. While the reserve might seem huge, he argued that is actually a low amount in the global financial markets. We are not going to become a new black rock. Perez added in reference to the US investment management giant that has around 6.84 trillion in assets under management. So these numbers get really huge. When we talk about millions, it's funny when you talk to young people now, they say, I don't want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. A millionaire seems to be the standard. Now we get into the billions of dollars and we can see more and more often we're seeing reference to trillions of dollars. Part of the reason for that is that there is, yes, more money in the world, but also because of inflation. A car used to be $2,000. Now the average car is around $30,000. A house used to be $30,000. Now the average house is around $500,000. Even though we have better technology and better methods to produce these things, they are becoming more expensive in nominal amounts because of the amount of money that's pouring into the economy and because, of course, inflation. Going on, the Libra Association chief also spoke with what might happen if there was a crash in one of the currencies included in the basket. If there is a catastrophe on a currency or a crisis between now and the Libra launch, we could remove it from the basket, but this decision should be put to the vote and taken by a two-thirds majority of the members of the association, he said. While the association is still to decide on how to write the basket, the US dollar should be very significant, around half, according to Perez. Currently, with 28 member companies, including notable firms such as Visa, MasterCard, PayPal and Uber, Libra aims to have 100 on board next year. So here you see a big basket of not just currencies of what it is pegged to, but big companies of who is playing this. Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, Uber, they are 
massive companies combined with the power of Facebook, you are looking at a very big powerhouse here, which is why many governments are getting nervous with what's happening in the Libra space. These will be selected objectively, Perez said, based on the rules of criteria defined according to their areas of activity, such as NGOs, commercial entities and blockchain groups. Libra has also seen over 100 requests to join the association, with firms having to contribute at least $10 million. So there's already a fair few massive companies in the association, as they call it, and yet there are even more people lining up with $10 million US cash on the table ready to go to join the alliance. I think that sounds stronger than association. So as we see governments are really putting pressure on this project to be ceased, we can see on the other end, companies are in fact lining up to join it and keep momentum. Reading on. He further suggested that Libra was about to be authorised as a payment system in Switzerland, but there is still plenty of work to do on the regulation front. Even so, we are firmly maintaining our launch schedule between the end of the first half of the year and the end of 2020. So we're looking at this thing, according to Perez, launching within a year, basically. Now, of course, the system of offshore accounts and global commerce makes this very difficult for a single government to stop. They might try to ban it in their country. There's an argument that because Facebook is based in America, it comes under American law. Now, that, of course, is true. However, what stops a company, as we've seen throughout modern history, of simply picking up and putting their headquarters in a different country? We can see this, of course, with offshore bank accounts. To avoid taxes, you create bank accounts or operations in different countries. And many countries, such as Switzerland, are more than happy to do that. They'll allow you to register, shop there, put your funds in their banks. They'll take a very small commission and you can keep rock and rolling. Operating offshore is not a new concept. It is simply a way of doing business in the modern era. And as it gets bigger and bigger and more normalized, it becomes more difficult for a single country, such as the US, to control the actions of a single company. Further, as that company breaks itself up with these associations operating on the outside with big companies saying that, hey, we're not just one big entity. We are multiple entities working together, such as MasterCard, Uber, Visa, and so forth. Well, that also becomes very difficult for a government to say you're operating as a monopoly or a duopoly or an ogolopoly as they start getting more and more players into their association. So as the bureaucratic troops of government and corporation assemble on the battlefield that is Libra, I genuinely wonder how they can stop this thing. We have seen big pushback against Facebook with respect to the amount of information that has been leaked. Yet when you really break it down and you look at how many people have actually broken away because they know about their information being shared or leaked, it's not proportionate. That is, knowing what Facebook has done or failed to do, depending which way you look at it, that is done in the sense that they've sold your information or failed to do, that being to disclose it or keep your information safe. The pushback, although big, has not been significant enough for Facebook itself to die. And big companies, smart companies, whether we like them or not, they evolve. And they evolve into new industries to keep up with new societal expectations and new societal norms. And the new societal norm, in my opinion, is crypto and understanding that fiat currencies cannot work into the future. Noting we are already using digital currencies and money is simply an exchange of a language, that being the language of value, people are now starting to ask why money has to be issued by governments. And more importantly, why that money that is in fact not even issued by governments, but issued by a non-elected third party, such as a Federal Reserve, that is neither a federal entity nor has any reserves of gold or real value, why do we need to play in that game at all when we have Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? Now, again, I'm not a supporter of the Libra project. Nonetheless, I love business and I see that this thing is big. And I see that when you have companies as big as Facebook, MasterCard, Visa, Uber, and way more, all lining up, putting $10 million on the table simply to play the game, knowing full well that they're taking on US and other governments, and we see continual investment in this project and it moving forward now with an expected start date, shall we say, let's say a start range. Can Libra be killed? Can crypto be killed? Can the internet be killed? Can you stop projects operating internationally? Sure, you might be able to ban it in one country, but even then, 
If it's operating on the internet, can that be stopped? Has China been able to stop people using Facebook in their country? Absolutely not. Has America been able to stop the dark web? Absolutely not. Has anyone been able to stop Bitcoin? Of course not. How on earth is the Libra project, knowing what's behind it, stopped? Noting that they've already made a type of currency, that being with that farm game, where they were, in fact, using money of some sort on a computer game, as we see everywhere. Money is simply an exchange of value, and that value is determined by the people. And if you and I say a pen has value, or a bottle of water, or a coin on a farm game, or a Libra token, then so be it. It has value. What are your thoughts? Will Libra survive? Is this going forward? Thanks for listening. Happy investing. And I'll talk to you next time.